Good morning, Reverend Tony here out with Pancake for another morning walk. It's still the Easter season and I'm thinking about the death and resurrection of Jesus and how I take a little bit different approach to its significance. So if you're interested, take a walk with us. Thanks for being with us once again. If you could, please like the video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Click that notification button so you know when we put out a new video. And when we're finished today, leave a comment. What do you think about today's video? We'd love to hear what you have to say. For a lot of Christians, Jesus' death on the cross was a salvific act. He was a sacrifice to God so that the sins of humanity would be forgiven. And this is called substitutional atonement. Like in many religious rituals, an animal or something is sacrificed to appease an angry God. I do not believe in substitutionary atonement. The whole thing has never really worked for me very well. It's almost as if you can be friends with me if I get to torture somebody else to death. I don't want anything to do with a God like that. So I think it works a little differently. Any God that would need that or want that is, I don't know, kind of a jerk. Wouldn't want to hang out with that God in a bar for a beer. So why would I want that God to be well God? One of my favorite theologians, Philip Gully, says, I was not born in sin needing to be rescued from an angry God, and neither were you. We were born imperfect and incomplete in an unfinished world. And salvation is growing up, growing wise, and finishing the job. It is becoming whole and healed and realizing our connections. Every now and then, we catch a glimpse of it. In 1805, American Universalist Hosea Ballou published a treatise on atonement, in which he argued that an infinite God cannot be upset at finite humans for committing sins so egregious that they would be sent to eternal torment. It's unreasonable, he argued, for an infinite God to be so upset at finite human beings and their finite capabilities for any offense that he would punish them with torture forever. And so he believed that upon death, everyone is ultimately reconciled with God. And this came to be called ultra-universalism. There were other universalists called restorationists who believed that after a period of atoning for their mistakes, they would all be reconciled to God. This idea of salvation is what came to permeate and become American Universalism, where all are saved. In their book, A Heretic's Guide to Eternity, Spencer Burke and Barry Taylor point out that the love of God is an opt-out proposition, not an opt-in for those who meet the membership rules. They quote Nick Cave's song, God's Hotel. Everybody's got a room at God's Hotel. Everybody's got a room. Well, you'll never see a sign hanging on the door saying no vacancies anymore. That is classical universalism. Grace. Welcome. You're invited. The universe is holy and you're in. You can opt out if you want to, but there is no special group of the elect or the saved you need to get yourself into. You're good. I like the theology where everyone is in unless they opt out. Grace is an opt-out proposition. Here are some other examples of Christian universalism. Go out into the highways and byways. Give the people something of your new vision. You may possess a small light, but uncover it. Let it shine. Use it in order to bring more light and understanding to the hearts of people. Give them not hell, but hope and courage. Preach kindness and the everlasting love of God. All will be redeemed in God's fullness of time. All, not just a small portion of the population who have been given the grace to know and accept Christ. All the strayed and stolen sheep. All the lost little ones. Only when we see that we are part of the totality of the planet, not a superior part with special privileges, 
can we work effectively to bring about an earth restored to wholeness? Because of all this, I do not believe Jesus died on the cross to save us from sin or save us from an angry God. What I do find powerful about the crucifixion of Jesus is that it is possible to believe in justice and love so much that you're willing to die for it. Not kill for it, but die for it if necessary. That's the extent to which all of us should dedicate our lives to peace, justice, equity, and taking care of this planet we live on. Thanks for joining Pancake and I for our walk today. Once again, please hit that thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, ring that notification bell, share this with others if you're enjoying it, and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear what you think about substitutionary atonement, universalism and grace as an opt-out proposition. Until next time, Pancake and I love you. Bye.